Jeez, I just wonder sometimes about people, how stupid they are. Anyway, just in the green no good enough. Anyway, I, I mean 74 comments. Individual, little, snarky, stupid bits of shit. I mean, I don't know why somebody would think this is at all polite or respectful or anything anybody should indulge or... I mean, I shouldn't even read this shit. I should just delete them all. But I'll, I'll quickly answer what questions deserve an answer. You are right. Dividing by C squared is irrelevant. Okay, so I'm right. Then that's an irrelevant comment. Thank you very much. Goodbye. Like you mean something. Like having you affirm it means something. No, it doesn't really mean anything. Potential mass. Nice. I don't... I'm not going to play my own video again, so fuck you. <laughs> Fields are made out of quanta. This statement makes no sense. Well, I suppose you didn't read the link to documents, so fuck you. I mean, really, I'm not going to spell it out for you. I've done a ton of videos about what the field's made out of. It's made out of moving bits. You don't get it? You don't get it. What do you mean, made out of quanta, when talking about the field of quantum field theory? I'm not talking about the fields of quantum field theory. I'm talking about my own field theory that has quanta of energy in it. Uh, I can't help that we have to use some parallel words here. The, the, you know, retarded fantasy physics doesn't own these words. Quanta corresponds to wave packet energy. No, it doesn't. <laughs> so so what, what do we want me to do? I can't call photons photons because you're going to tell me what a photon is? I mean, fuck you, okay? You don't understand. You're too stupid. Then you're too stupid. If you can't separate, I'm not making their argument. I'm making my argument. You can't figure that out? Wow, you're really fucking goddamn dumb. Jesus Christ. Negative energy. <laughs> I love this. Negative energy is matter, uh, is a matter of where you start the scale. It's not, that's just absolutely insane. Sorry. Negative energy is an insane concept. It just, it's just stupid. Uh, see my comment below for negative root E equals MC squared. No, I don't need to do that. The only important thing is to understand energy is energy. Energy is movement of quanta, it really doesn't, this bullshit doesn't mean anything. Energy is a quanta moving one quanta of space. Plank, plank, plank all the way down. Fuck you. This refers to the required energy supply to point <clears throat> to a point in a vacuum. Uh, again, these are, this is your nonsense, okay? I'm not defending or even arguing with current physics beyond the fact that I'll argue the whole theoretical dynamic of space-time and all that kind of shit. But I don't give a crap about this really obtuse nonsense you idiots believe in. Your stupid vacuum crap. <laughs> you know, that's your problem, fella. Uh, vacuums are nothing, okay? So they're kind of irrelevant to anything. Anyway, in order for a particle of mass m to appear, so long as m is a miscible quantum number relevant, yeah, whatever. Fuck you. Again, fuck you. All right, you counter-argue my theory. I'm not going to argue your nonsense, you idiot. And especially when you're so rude, you didn't even submit your paper to me in some kind of appropriate... Well, look, I have my own theory of reality. You want a link to that? Fine. But otherwise, fuck you. You want my opinion of your stupid theory? Fine. But you don't do this to somebody's video, you rude bastard. Antimatter does exist, and it's been created in particle accelerators. Well, again, to call it antimatter, in my opinion, is nonsense. There's no such thing as anti-energy, okay? So you want to tell me, show me the anti-energy, then you can talk to, about antimatter. We already know from Einstein that matter equals energy, energy equals matter. They're the same motherfucking thing, so if you're going to say there's antimatter, then it better be anti-energy. And it's not, okay? The fact that you have something spinning one way and spinning the other way, and having, having incompatible spins is not the same thing as an anti so it's just a silly use of the word, and that's what I goddamn said. I was clear in my context. It's, it's a silly use of the word antimatter, okay? You don't use it in this context, because it has a reverse spin, and the two particles end up releasing a ton of energy, all of their energy. That's not exactly anti-anything. That's very something-something. It's essentially what a nuclear bomb is. You don't call a nuclear bomb anti-something, you stupid fuck. Jeez. Eats the particle and nothing happens. What can you possibly mean by nothing happening? Eats uh, for the matter. When the particle anticipated pairs annihilate one another, well, whatever. I'm not doing this pair crap. It's just a pop of shit. Up and down are completely compatible. Up and say orange when they're... Oh, fuck you. I mean, again, you're, you're, you're really idiotic if you think I'm going to hit all of these little links to my own video. Listen to my own video again so I can read your snarky comments. If you can't quote me, then fuck off. Jeez, it's so impolite. 
Um, agreed regarding energy alchemy. Well, fuck you. I don't need, can I don't need your your agreement scares me. The fact that you would agree with anything I say doesn't make me feel good. There's no converting energy to mass. Mass is simply confined energy. Well, whatever that means. The energy is still there. Well, that's exactly what I'm arguing, you retard. Uh, no, you really don't. Well, that's really useless. God, fucking cunt. I really should just block him because this is, this is just so rude. Mass is not a property that all energy exhibits, which is, I think it's not grammatically valid. Well, I'm not going to play grammatical games. You can take those and shove them up your ass. Photons do have mass. How else do you explain gravitational lensing? I explain it's not existing, you retard. You don't have one damn good image of any of it anywhere. So they did an experiment in 1919, never repeated it. So they have no images of the sun gravitationally lensing anything. And every one of the galactic uh, galaxy lenses are completely inconsistent with all of my Einstein's math. So, really, it's a big fat pile of shit. Do you want to say the photons don't have inertial mass? I, I don't. What I'm saying is, uh, mass, <coughs> matter is energy caught in orbits. Orbits are what confines the energy. That's what they're actually trapped in, retard. And orbits are conservation. Okay, they contain equal amounts of energy in different directions, compensating amounts of energy in different directions. And that's the battery trap. Um, and they have gravity. The individual bits don't care about gravity because they're doing kinetic thing, and the kinetic thing is completely transparent in terms of any kind of energy impact. So fuck you. Uh, don't believe in distinction between gravitational and inertial mass. Again, I, yes, this whole use of the, you're, you don't even understand what inertial is. It's, it's even silly to talk about inertial anything. Because there's no such thing as, as, a, as a, you're probably never going to find something in perfect balance in the entire universe. So everything's in some sort of inertial state means it's in some state of velocity in some direction. And it's, the question really is, how does it gain more velocity or how does it lose the velocity it has? Fuck you. It has been drawn <coughs> anywhere during either of these videos. Shame on you for that. Fuck you. I have done it. It's nothing I've left out. Um, no mass is not an indicator of amount of stuff unless it's stuff. You mean confined energy. Well, what the fuck else would you think I meant, you fucking retard? I mean, this has got to be the stupidest comment you could possibly make. Yeah, what, yeah, what, do, I, what do you think else I think is in a fucking atom except for confined energy, you retard? I mean, it's the whole premise of my theory that everything is made out of energy, that there is nothing else. There's fucking arrows moving in a direction, and that's all there is, or blobs, or mushrooms, or uh, marshmallows. I don't care what you make it out of, but they're all moving the speed of light in a direction. Yeah, everything's made out of that. Everything that is is something is that. You fuck. Uh, you should definitely not think about it that way, since that formulation... If you made designer use the term is neither accurate or precise. Well, fuck you. I'm not going to go figure it out, but I'm sure it's accurate and I'm sure it's precise and I'm sure you're an idiot. This one's <clears throat> this one's in the heavier place. Nice. Well, again, that that rhetoric is absolutely meaningless to me. So, fuck you, dude. Um, gravity doesn't push down on anything. Car puzzles of gravitational mass follow their whatever this geodesics which are curved and accelerated frames. Well, again, that's you're going to argue your fairy tale. Go ahead and argue it all you want. There's no curved space. You're living in a delusion. It's a fake universe that you're designing for yourselves. And so go ahead. You're an idiot. You, you've, you know, damaged your brain with inaccurate information. The horizontal configuration weighs less since, <clears throat> in that case, the box is farther from the Earth's center, so it's less under the sway of the gravitational field. Well, again, the, the box, this is, I think, has to do with the, uh, the photons in a box, I would imagine. Weight is a measure of force, and it's proportional to gradient and acting a potential. Well, I know, but you're doing an absolute pressure, so it's not measuring weight, it's measuring its force. So force dynamics would be in all directions equally. So you're not even getting the analogy used in the video. So way to be off the subject, idiot. Weight is never a measure of mass, but always the force due to the effect of the pendulum. Yeah, well, it's always consistent. So that part is the win, okay? You can't avoid your atomic weight when it comes to gravity. Gravity will find it, so to speak. So it just doesn't matter. 
I mean, it's just silly to, to, to talk about it in some sort of like the two aren't completely interwoven because they are. There's no way to have mass without having vulnerability to gravity. In space, there's no acting potential, so of course no weight. Well, again, it dis this is a silly distinction. Weight is not a measure of mass. It's completely consistent with mass when you measure, when you're using gravity as the instrument of the measure. So you will never avoid finding mass when you use gravity as a way of measuring. So if the scales are using gravity to measure mass, you will get an accurate reading of weight. The weight of an ensemble is varies with the position with respect to the assumed potential. Again, none of that stuff makes any goddamn difference. So fuck you. Agreed. Who cares? Uh, here, here's all the pictures you need. I've been there, asshole. Fuck you. I mean, really. The, 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 I've been to the Wikipedia pages. They, they're not explaining diffraction. They're showing a, a wave interference, you fucking retard. They're using this this silly Huygens bullshit. And they're, they, you can see it in the math. Go look at the mathematical equation. It's the same math as the two-slit or the 15-slit experiment, except it's a different fraction they multiply by. Because they cut the slit in half. You don't get it? pretty fucking obvious they cut the slit in half you shithead they make it into a two slit experiment dumbass jesus christ it's proven we've got the pictures pictures don't prove anything but many illustrate the crux of evidence well i don't know what that is but you don't have the pictures you fucking cunt all experimental evidence for general relativity, and there is rather a lot of it. No, there isn't any of it. There's evidence of space-time. What are you saying? I'm saying that my theory is proven, okay, by time dilation, not Einstein's. That's what I'm saying. My theory predicts time dilation, and it does it in a rational matter rather than an irrational one. Uh, since Newton time, what gravity basically does has been a mystery. Well, uh, that's their problem, right? Even in Newton's magnus opus in Principali, he leaves the discussion about gravity, what, how gravity does what it does to the reader. Yeah, but that's not how he thought about it. He had, obviously, he had his own opinions. And um, he did definitely um, correspond with a guy talking about a particle-based theory of gravity kinetic gravity, well, whatever you want to call it, uh, particle gravity. And um, he even signed off on the idea. The guy asked Newton to endorse his paper, and no Newton did sign it and endorse it. So Newton said it's this is theoretically uh, a viable theory. Um, and later he basically said, yeah, I'm not too interested anymore, 10 years later. But they all played with it. They all liked it, so fuck you. All right, <clears throat> space-time was not invented to account for how gravity seems to act at a distance. Well, yes, it was. Have some more education here. No, I don't need to. Okay, that's exactly all it's there for. You're welcome. I'll fuck you in the ass until motherfucking goddamn dead, you fucking patronizing weasel of a rude cunt. <clears throat> I mean, really. It's, it's all... <laughs> I mean, if you think relativity is doing something else, you're a deluded idiot. Uh, it was a, a contrivance to explain the energy of gravity, and all they did was put the energy in a fake dimension. It's that simple. Gravity is not falling into the bend, but rather falling is itself moving with the bent path. Well, again, it's just such a silly notion, okay, of this idea that, yes, I'll create a bend, but nothing sticks it to the road. So obviously then you're just saying the energy, I'm using a different kind of energy now. Now the, the thing is sticking to the bend because we already know inertia says I'm not going in some other direction unless you apply a force. So what's your force gluing the thing to the bend, right? Because you're violating the, the rules of inertia if you say uh, and Newton's fundamental principle that you can't, you have, to have an, you have to have the force somewhere. So you have to have something sticking it to that bend, idiot. So you're still just you're just changing what you're saying is is energy. And, and again, this whole idea that you can the, the very idea of bending this space implies energy because it's not a straight line anymore. I mean, if you're varying from the straight line, it's obviously you're 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 creating energy because now you're you're creating more space essentially, or you're creating more time. But either one of those things would require energy 
to be created. <sighs> Just hopelessly stupid. Gravity is not a source of energy, but rather an effect of confined energy on a, <laughs> oh, here we go, topology of space-time itself. Yeah, all, all invented topology that you claim doesn't require any energy to change paths. And we know that everything, you're not going to change anything's path without applying energy in any common circumstance in the universe. So in your special space-time, it doesn't take any energy to force something to go another direction. So it breaks the fundamental rules. It never was a pulling problem. Well, then why are physicists constantly calling it a pulling problem? So I don't know what physicists you're talking to or listening to, but every one of the ones I've heard, they have a problem. Uh, what's the bendy thing? I don't know what that is. Fuck it. Nobody said we'll just make energy out of bent space. Who are these they you keep reading? Uh, any physicist that ever uses the two-dimensional diagram of, of bent space to explain gravity. Bingo. Yes, the photons have gravitational but not inertial mass since they, uh, like everything else, they travel along... Well, see, you're saying this. You're saying they're they're traveling along this space-time force, and they're going to be bent by this space. But there's absolutely no reason to believe this. I've been to this these gravitational lensing sites. These these images are totally unimpressive. They make absolutely no sense as lenses. They break all the math. The lens is too big. There's not enough gravity where the lensing is supposed to be taking place. They're fucking mathematical nightmares. So quit pretending this means something. It means absolutely nothing. You motherfucking cunt. I've done video showing these fucking shitty images i'm certain a simple google yeah i'm certain if you do the goddamn search and open up the field images then why don't you explain the field images take four lensings out of that field image and explain to me how it's possible that there's a hundred meters per second per second gravity where that lensing is taking place because that's what einstein says has to be you dumb fuck if you knew anything about gravity, you'd also know that when the when the galaxy is turned this way, it has a lot less gravity than when it's turned this way. You dumb fuck. Also, so you can't. You, the only place you could ever do lensing is with a gravity on edge because there's more mass. A gravity this way, there's no mass for the light to even be affected by. You stupid fuck. God, you arrogant cunts. By the phrase, the sun's ability to lens, are you talking about gravitational lens? Yes, I'm talking about the 1919 experiment that made Einstein famous, you retard. Anything that generates a gravitational field has a, an ability to lens. Well, then you're retarded because Einstein wouldn't agree with that. Einstein wouldn't say you could lens anything with the goddamn Earth or with Mars or with any other planet. And the phenomenon is very well understood thanks to general relativity. Well, you don't understand it because you don't understand that the fucking gravity just a little way away from the surface of the sun isn't sufficient to bend light anymore, you retard. Mathematically insufficient by Einstein's own math, you fucking retard. Typically, we would likely require objects more massive than one solar mass. Again, the fact that it's supposed to exist, they did the experiment in 1919. They said it was gravitational lensing. So obviously one solar mass is enough mass, you fucking cunt, to detect lensing. But there are many examples. And one solar mass, for those readers who aren't informed, one solar mass means that the gravity would be 70 meters per second per second. A lot of gravity, which means you have to go really, really fast or you fall into it. And if you fall into it, you fall into it really, really fast. At 70 meters per second per second, you're going the speed of light in just a matter of days. But there are many examples. Fuck you. They're terrible. They're, 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 they're not mathematically goddamn correct. Everybody keeps bringing up this fucking mathematical crap, and this is just so fucking irritating because you idiots don't even sit there and acknowledge the fact that the math doesn't work. And that's why they invented dark matter to fill in the gaps. And then when they put the dark matter in there, how is that going to make any sense? Oh yeah, we have a whole bunch more mass inside this galaxy that somehow only has gravity where we want it to be, but it isn't causing any effects with the rest of the galaxy. It's not perverting it or bending it or doing anything to it. So it's enough gravity to bend light, but it doesn't bend the other stars in the galaxy. How fucking convenient. But there are many examples. By calling into question the sun's ability to lend you are thereby calling into question contemporary estimations 
on the sun's mass. No, I'm saying the credibility of science is hinged on all of this crap. They claim this is an absolute fact. They say it exists. Yet they have one 1919 experiment to demonstrate or prove it. Science is supposed to repeat fucking experiments. It's not supposed to say, no, let's never repeat it ever again. Hubble telescope isn't, isn't blinded by atmospheric uh, 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 light uh, scattering. So why aren't they doing the experiment once a year? Oh, they're not doing it because they already have done it, I think and they found out, fuck it, there's nothing there. All right, the equivalency principle, depending on which version interests you, no, I'm not interested in any of it, states that gravitational frames are identical to accelerating. Well, again, I don't even believe in gravitational frames, so I think this whole thing is absolute nonsense, so I really couldn't give a shit, but the real point of the equivalency principle is that, yes, acceleration is supposed to be acceleration, and velocity is velocity, but frankly, I don't think that's true. Uh, photons can be a mass and orbit is what a mass is. What are you talking about, please? What you can't figure out that simple thing out. Energy is straight line. Light, light travels in straight lines. If I make the light go in an orbit by twisting it around and making it do some other kind of dance um, and use up its speed, but it spins in a little circle. That's called an orbit, retard. Too complex for you? I mean, think about it. If, if, I, if I spin it in like a spring, if I take a, a beam of light and I make it go like a spring, right, it's not going to be going the speed of light anymore, is it? It's going to take it a lot longer to get where it's going. Well, then if I take that spring and I also spring that around in a circle, then I have an orbit, right, that's going, this, it's going the speed of light, but it doesn't look like it's going the speed of light, does it? But it looks like it's going much slower, doesn't it? Yes, well, that's what matter is, you stupid cunt, basically. It's even simpler than that, but I'm not going to waste my time. I have a paper on the subject. You read the fucking paper. It's linked in every one of the fucking videos, you stupid cunt. <sighs> there is no top thing. The theory is consistent and excruciatingly well advanced. There is no top thing. The theory is consistent and excruciatingly well evidenced. What theory? So again, you're talking about gravitational lensing still? I don't know, but I'm not, like I said, this is just idiotic. You can't quote me out of my own videos, you impolite motherfucker. Newton thought that light was made of particles. Light has, yes, well, Newton wasn't right about everything, was he? No, he wasn't. Actually, no. Faster bullets travel around 500 feet a second, say, which means light travels at a mere 160,000 times that of... Uh, fastest bullets. Yes, 160,000 times um, would be, uh, yeah, a bullet's about one, one, one uh, unit, and light would be 100, but I'm using units now, so that is probably correct. So, yes, it's, look, I'm making a video, I'm not, uh, you know, it's, it's not fully researched in every detail, but yes, thank you very much for the correction. In the future, I'll be careful to say that light goes 186 thousand times faster than your fastest bullet just so people get some kind of perspective that the speed of light isn't anything like material objects material objects don't do anything close to this light speed thing yeah that was the point of the argument jackass newton believed that light was particles because waves don't tend to travel in straight lines um and again, look, Newton's right in the sense that they're, they're particles, but they're not particles that have mass. That mass is a little different than just having a big particle, because he didn't, Newton didn't know that the Earth was made of a ton of things spinning around, and atoms spinning, and electrons spinning, and neutrons spinning, and protons spinning. He didn't understand any of that shit, you retard. Yes, you have to have an orbit to have mass. I just can't resist. A moment ago, you claimed the path of light cannot be bent, and now you're talking about light orbiting something. Again, yes, and if somebody listens to my argument, the point is the light doesn't orbit in a straight line. I've already gone through this. It elises. It goes in one dimension at a time. So it moves in a straight line that way, then it moves a straight line that way, then it moves straight lines that way, straight lines this way. It only moves in one dimension at a time. And, um, yeah. So there are no circles. Circles are an illusion. The Earth doesn't really go in a clean orbit. The Earth is actually going much faster than it appears to be going because it's actually going two directions at the same time. It's going that way. That would be its trajectory if it left the solar system. And then it's also going into the sun. And it's doing both of those directions. So it's actually traveling a lot more distance than the curved path. 
I've already explained that in videos. You're a fucking cunt. All right, we call this uh, Brownian motion. Yeah, I already know about Brownian motion. Retard gravity is about acceleration, acquisition of velocity. Nice. Yes. Well, that's just too obvious, isn't it? Uh, I get that this is <coughs> fleshing out of Jerry's pantaphysical equivalence of institutional theory of gravity as attraction towards math with an alternative presentation of gravity as counter well I don't know what you think this is but I ah, fuck you when you say the field is in balance do you mean a non-zero div I don't know what that is deriv when you say the field is in balance, do you... No, I just mean that there's more stuff going this way than going that way. And that means there's an imbalance in the field. And that means you're going to end up getting pushed one way or the other. It's, uh, it's like the mountain. The mountain is balanced when none of the rocks are moving. But when the rocks move, then it's imbalanced. Something like that. <sighs> Dark matter was not invented to explain lensing, as it was. Lensing was predicted by general relativity. And it's, it's, it, you know, again, I'm not going to argue it, but fuck, Einstein never said you could do galactic lensing. He never said you could lens with fucking weak gravitational bodies. Clearly, gra uh, galaxies are not hard matter. They're not even close to something like hard matter. They're full of empty space. Their gravity is weak at the locations of the lens, you stupid cunt. Einstein said you could lens on the surface of suns, and he said you probably will never see it because the suns in space are so far away and the lens would be so thin that you'd never be able to see the lensing, and our own sun is too bright, blah, 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 blah. But they did find it in 1919, right? And never since, by a friend of his, actually found it, eh, conveniently. But we still have no evidence of the sun lensing anything. See my post below. No, they're not complete images, retard. Radio waves are electromagnetic waves, 3 to 30 gigahertz frequency range. Well, again, you're not getting it. They also have what's called a wavelength. Not just a frequency, but a wavelength, okay? And they have a length. So how far uh, in, in <clears throat> you know, in 3 kilohertz, there's, there's radio waves much slower than that. Um... But um, it's the it's the length of time it takes for the the frequency to reach it. So at the speed of light, it ends up can be miles long. I don't know exactly the length of of three kilohertz, three thousand hertz. I don't know how long a Planck. I don't know in Planck terms how long a hertz is. Uh, let's see. Let me think. How long would a hertz be? Um, yeah. Well, I'm not going to hurt my brain trying to figure that one out. But hertz is are really small little things, and um, no, the, the hertz would be a meter, wouldn't it? So that's three thousand meters. Well, I'm not going to try to figure it out now. So you you figure out how long a hertz is, and then you'll know what I was talking about, you stupid cunt. All right, so now I'm going to have to reload this page because he's probably got more somewhere, this fucking goddamn abusive cunt. Four more. Okay, five. I don't know what that means, but goodbye to that. Four. A representation, a -ness in relation to local fields. When you say local, do you mean local in the sense of local class field? No, I just mean that it, as something spins, it leaves, it, it, it creates waste, and the waste ends up in a secondary place where the spin is 30 percent weaker let's say and then the out here the spin is even you know 10 it's only 10 percent as strong as it is in the center so it's a weakening field and so it's ejected into a weakening probability of of being affected by the spin there's not a surface there's not something where it's spinning and then there's right outside the spin it's completely quiet space nothing spinning everything's really cool it doesn't work that way. Just as the spin gets faster as you go in, it gets slower as you go out. All right. Uh, representing this, I don't even know what that means, so fuck this. Uh, quarks are not particles. In what sense are quarks not particles? In the sense that they're, they're just another form of storm, okay? You could say a neutron is a hurricane or pro, a proton. 
it's a, a hurricane and then you could say a new neutron is a uh, tropical depression and then you could say that an electron is a thunderstorm and you could say that a quark is a blustery day how's that it's swirly bits okay uh, the blue dot is losing gravitational potential energy with respect to its position in the gravitational field generated by the red dot sense as you know gravitational potential energy is inversely proportional to the distance between an object and the center this means as i'm sure you know that the nearer the object becomes the more energy will be necessary to separate them from the original configuration well it's, uh, i'm not really terribly interested in what kind of energy is needed to separate them the more interesting fact is um, is that in stasis when they're actually have enough velocity to keep them from falling in that they're still technically accelerating so they're still technically traveling the distance of going in and that's one that hasn't been accounted for in physics and that's the one where I'm probably going to be able to demonstrate their mathematical errors because they have miscalculated the actual speed of things like the earth the actual speed of the earth is not its circumference speed its actual speed is the amount of time it takes to go the component of acceleration towards the sun plus the component of their velocity towards some future destination and that number is slightly different when you start doing when you do the aliasing line you'll find a longer distance and that longer distance is the real velocity can be derived from that distance so by cut now look if you want to leave comments you type your comments and you leave one comment I think leaving a bunch of links to time codes in the video I think that's obnoxious because it just implies like I don't have anything better to do with my fucking time than keep watching the video reload at a new time and I really do have better things to do with my time so I think the polite thing to do on somebody else's video is, is for you to quote the bit that you're arguing with or want to add something to and that's just a, a reasonable courtesy if you can't extend me that courtesy then go fucking someplace else you stupid cunt and this whole idea of you showing up here thinking you should just post a whole pile of shit on my videos like that and expect other readers don't want to hear or see anything else but your fucking comments I mean that's just fundamentally rude I mean if nobody's told you that yet nerdy puss you just don't do that in the real world that's just fucking rude it's not rude to me it's rude to these people that might want to read the comment section you stupid cunt it's rude to every other human being on goddamn earth you fucking asshole so you know grow up alright enough of that I would post his name but I don't know it anymore now <laughs> yeah title of a video with his name but I forget <laughs>